Dr. Candy Ashenden, the pastor of the Athol Congregational Church. And I invite you to join me this morning as we explore Pennsylvania Dutch country and we think about the lives of the Amish people, those people who have devoted themselves to the scriptural passage, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Join me as we explore these sacred places. Hi, church family. We're here to do the call to worship. <laughs> we are pulled in many directions. Many duties and tasks seek to lay claim on our lives. This day, in this place, let service to God be your choice. This day, in this place, we open our hearts and spirits to God. Blessed be the God of creation who has called us here. Praise be to God who sustains and nurtures our lives. Let us enter into this sacred place. Good morning. Please join Steve, Dave, Lucy, and Susan in singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Pray with me as I pray a typical Amish prayer written by Beverly Lewis. O oh Lord, Almighty God and Heavenly Father, you did not give us life and set us in this world merely so we would nourish ourselves with grief and work until we return to the dust from whence we came. Instead, you ordained our lives so that we should fear you and love you and cleave to you with all our hearts. Even as your divine grace gave us the day to work, so you gave us the night to rest. Under your fatherly shield of protection, we have mercifully ended this rest. And for that, we humbly praise and bless you with deep gratitude. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. worship service this morning comes from what people call Dutch country in Pennsylvania. This is where many Amish live and work and have made their homes. We are here today in Kitchen Kettle Village, a quaint shopping center for the Amish to sell their wares and their goods, but it is closed today because it is Sunday and the Amish regularly celebrate their Sabbath. Do you remember the ice bucket challenge from a few years ago? Members of the Conway Church decided to do that fundraiser, and we lined up one Sunday afternoon and did indeed dump buckets of ice water over each of our heads. The Conway Church decided to take that challenge even a bit further though, and the following summer, they all raised money and challenged the Waitley Church to participate with us. Though I must admit that more of the Conway folks braved that ice water that day. It was a challenge indeed for God to lead two million Israelites across the Jordan into the promised land. But he used Joshua to do this and Joshua was feeling confident at the end of his life that he had brought these people to a new place. No longer were they struggling in the wilderness. No longer were they waiting for the daily manna to feed them. They instead were able to settle down, to build houses, to plant vineyards. And Joshua felt confident in how he had brought them there and the life they were beginning. But Joshua knew that it would be easy for them in those times to slide backwards in their faith. So he issued another challenge. He said to them, you need to continue to focus on serving the Lord and he promised them and encouraged them to adopt the pledge, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We don't think of our faith in this way very often, but the Amish people certainly do. The Amish are an American Protestant group with around 200,000 members descended from European Anabaptists who came to the USA more than two centuries ago to escape persecution. They originated in Europe after splitting from Mennonite Swiss Brethren in 1692 over the treatment of members who had been found guilty of breaches of doctrine, and they arrived in Pennsylvania in the 1730s. Perhaps best known for their 19th century way of life and dress, the Amish is not what we would today consider a lifestyle choice, but rather it is truly their way of living and being in the world. The Amish people feel that their life and their faith should be both inseparable and interdependent. They believe that the salvation comes from living in a loving community apart from the world. Because of this, you see the Amish people gathering in small communities in different locations where they live and work, where they travel and educate their children only through the age of 14 and then put them to work in their communities. They live and all of these things differently and apart from the world, but they are not exclusive, for they still regularly interact and interface with those they call the English. 
better to live this way. Members of the community help each other, and the whole community will work together to help a member in trouble. They do not accept state benefits or use insurance, but rely on community support instead. Each Amish district is fully independent and lives by its own set of unwritten rules, or ordnung, and the Amish community governs itself strictly. Baptized members are morally committed to church rules. Erring members may be shunned until there is repentance, forgiveness, and restoration to full fellowship. The Amish stress simplicity and humility, and they avoid anything associated with self-exaltation, pride of position, or enjoyment of power. The Amish believe that God is pleased when they work with plants and animals, with nature, with the soil, with the weather, and when they care for people and for animals. That's why you'll always find the Amish living in rural communities. They are at one with the soil and with the environment. It's also why they tend to eschew modern conveniences, such as cars, electricity, and some forms of technology. They don't do this because they think those things are inherently evil, but rather because they fear that those things might damage actual relationship. The Amish have pledged, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. They take this pledge seriously, and Joshua encouraged the Israelites to take this pledge seriously as well. He encouraged them and taught them that with this great gift comes responsibility. The great gift of God's love and faith brings with it an awesome responsibility. For when you are dealing with God, you're not dealing with bland and boring and indifferent. When you're dealing with God, you're dealing with holy, with passion, and with zeal. The Amish strive fervently in life and action to remember this. And at times I think we struggle, as I'm sure they do in their human hearts as well. We struggle to remember God as holy, and we lose track of this God, don't we? I think at times we think of God almost like an employer. And we come to church and we punch our time card every Sunday morning, or whenever you get around to watching this message. We throw a little money in the offering plate or mail it in as the case is these days. We say a prayer here and there and we consider that fulfilling our commitment. The Amish regularly worship, often with a three hour worship service every other Sunday. And they gather in each other's homes, which are designed to host large enough gatherings for this weekly gathering of worship. And they alternate between homes so that they go back and forth and share the three-hour worship and then a fellowship meal together. And you thought a 30-minute service was long. Okay. Well, we may not feel called to live apart from the world in the same way that the Amish people do. We are still called to live our faith in word and in action. Joshua knew that it was going to be hard for the Israelites to let go of other gods because putting God first in our lives is never easy. It's important for us, and I believe that the Amish are correct, when they assert that it is important to live our faith more in action than just in word. Words are important too, but words are only important when they speak to the reality that is your life, and when they exemplify the faith your life espouses. I've come to really admire the Amish people. Their commitment to faith and their growth throughout the world is impressive. The Amish now inhabit 20 U.S. states and Canada, and there are over 200,000 of them with a population that is growing, almost doubling every 20 years. When we try to live our faith, I think we sometimes give the wrong impression to people. We try to make ourselves look normal in their eyes, so we speak like our generation, dress like our generation, even swear like our generation. We try to be attractive by joking with them and meeting them where they are. We have good intentions and we want to reach out. And all of this is important because we are just like everyone else. But we also want folks to see that believing in and serving our loving God helps us to live our lives differently. We are meant to be in the world and not of it. 
That doesn't mean we're better than anyone else, often far from it, but it does mean that we continually call ourselves back to the why. And the why is because, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Your home is your sacred place. Do you like a challenge? Or do you dig in your heels and say, I don't wanna? Joshua challenged the Israelites to be different. And the challenge to us is different in a sense, because the challenge to us as Christians is not to be someone different. The challenge is to be who we are. We have a passionate, loving, and creative God who loves us just the way we are and calls us to be more of who we are. The Amish have lived up to the challenge of truly living a life of faith. I believe we can do that too. Who's up for the challenge? Amen. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that you are indeed in each of our homes, that you are present with us as we make promises to serve you, to love you, to walk faithfully all of our lives. We come in this moment, O oh God, to lift up the joys and concerns of our hearts collectively and individually. We know, O oh God, that you hear our individual prayers and that you know what people most need. But today, O oh God, we come before you, lifting up those by name who are near and dear to the congregation. We pray for Vera and for Barbara as they both continue treatments. We pray for Ruth as she continues to work with nurses to straighten out her medications to restore her to health. We pray for Marianne with great gratitude that she is home and recovering. We offer prayers continually for Matt as he recovers from surgery and follows the rules of healing. And we pray, O oh God, for those battling COVID, for those whose names we know and those we don't. We pray for those who have lost loved ones due to this horrible virus. And we lift up by name today, John, as he continues his battle in Florida. And we lift up prayers anew for Tom, who is the son-in-law of Karen and Bruce Banks. We pray for Tom and his recent diagnosis with COVID and that he may keep his friends and family safe and that he may journey through this to a successful recovery. Loving and gracious God, as this virus sweeps anew through our area, we pray for everybody's safety, and we pray that we will continue as a people to find ways to be apart, to find ways to be together while still apart, that while we feel apart, O oh God, we not struggle to remain connected to you and to one another. In your name, O oh God, as always, we lift up the prayers of your people. Amen. As we go forth from this place, let us remember that it doesn't matter where we are, for every sacred place is our Father's house. And let us remember to live by the principle of the Amish. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.